Hello, Hello. and welcome. welcome. <laughs> I did. What, what is it after the hello? You go. We go hello together, right? Okay. Yeah. You go and welcome to the live stream. I go of consciousness. And welcome to the live stream of consciousness. That's <sighs> Michael Zinn. I'm Jesse Blaze Snyder. What is happening, is folks? Lovely to see you guys. I'm going to be kind of like vibrating here in place today because uh, this week I kind of um, uh, jerked my lower back and I got some of that sciatic nerve stuff going on. Oh, so oh I try not to vibrating for a good much. reason. Well, I mean, you know, I, there's oh, there's plenty of good reasons to vibrate too, because I'm seeing my babies are coming to stay with yes. me for the summer in just a few days. In two days, I leave That's on awesome. Saturday really early in the morning, grab them at the airport, and then head right back. And I'm so excited. So, and That's my kids awesome. are so excited. It's good. How's life going by you, Mr. Michael? Sim? Life is going good, man. Life is going good. We got some people want to say hello to Ninja Kitty. Uh, we've got some new people. We got Morgan. Who say Pfizer and um and uh, and uh, talk about your your week while I grab my phone. okay we've got Angela hello Angela we've got Taylor out there hello Taylor Taylor saying hello to Ninja Kitty so uh, yeah this week was pretty good um I uh, I actually turned my lease in on my car uh, and I didn't like being in a lease so I decided to finance a car so I financed a uh, an hrv so i've got an hrv nice yeah so That's and cool. and i and i very uncreatively named my hrv harvey harvey I, harvey, I, I harvey thought, the hrv i thought cars were girls Har like pj harvey oh okay right. <laughs> i don't know okay. it just seemed it seemed appropriate harvey so, and then we got somebody else there. Hello, Zelda Star. Welcome. Welcome. We've got a couple of new listeners, uh, new viewers, listeners, viewers, beers. <laughs> How was your week, buddy? Um, Are you there? Hello? Well, honestly, you know, my week was a little rough. Uh, I got sick uh, and I had like a bit of a stomach thing and I really wasn't feeling good. And then because I was like run down and, and sick and wasn't that active, my lower back like had a chance to sort of spasm when I just was like in a weird position and I had a little cough and my my uh, muscles and my back went out and so that was not fun because it was one of the longest amounts of time sorry I just got my hair cut and I feel like I have hair oh in my eye. no wonder you look so handsome um, thank you um but uh it was like the longest amount of time I had to deal with that sciatic helplessness that comes with sciatic mm. nerve pain it's yeah. really no fun. The last time Pain I is did the it worst, to myself, man. I was super motivated because I was kind of with a friend who could work on me. And when I was hurt, they tended to feel like guilty. So I didn't like to be hurt around them. Um, you know, and I had like done it like by myself and I was away from them. And I'm like, I got to get this together so that like, I'm, like they don't think this is their responsibility. And I'm literally like, on the floor looking up YouTube videos of what to do, like, you know, to get your back straight. And I managed to get myself straight. And um, this time, though, I I couldn't get up from the seat I was in because it was a it had a, an armrest on one side, and then uh, it like the couch cushion where I was sitting was really really squishy. So right. the differential was like was like this, and I I couldn't uh, I couldn't get any. So I twisted like, yourself I, weird. I, I and I was just trying to turn around for a while, just like trying to get my like it was just one of the hi hey, hi hey, ha. Hey. And I, I finally was like on the floor going, all right, well, I don't know what to do about this. And I, I crawled over to the nightstand uh, up there and I got my uh, father on the phone and I said, he's like, you know, I'm in the house. I'm like, I know you're in the house. Can you please oh, wow. come upstairs? Yikes. Um, and then, I mean, I largely kind of got myself situated and you know, he helped me a little bit, but like, just kind of like helped me to have somebody there. I think that just like calmed me down. Because it right. really sucks if, if you're somebody who's ever dealt with any of that sciatic nerve stuff or whatever. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't let the doctor tell you it's going to be for forever. You know, I think if we do the proper work, I think my big problem has been that I haven't done enough work to support it. Enough mm -hmm. work to 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 prevent that from happening, the, the preventive mm -hmm. care. But it really does suck when that happens. It just Yeah, it, totally. It, it's debilitating. You feel so helpless and and so like, what am I going to do? Like, like you yeah. can't do anything. And then even when you get to 
the point where you're like standing. Oh my God, my brain is not working because like, right. every two seconds I've got a, a decent shot of like hmm, up into my you know spine, and then I'm like, what was I doing? Where where am I? What's my name? Oof. <laughs> you know, like it's really That's horrible. It's, it's yeah, I used to get it when I would, was driving, so it would be when I was sitting in a sitting position. Uh, I would get the sciatic pain, but I, I haven't experienced it in a while. I'm actually glad. Well, so it did go and, uh, You know, and I, I and I kind of feel like this is the last hurrah for mine. I've been like keeping yeah. kind of challenged to like press these things out, I, but I got my kids, my kids coming, and I'm super excited. Yeah, that's good. That's um, something to look forward to. Three weeks into food paradise, and um, sweet having a and, and and you know what? And 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 I had, you know, my parents were, were very were very helpful and whatnot, but also. I had someone to turn to. Um, shout out to my my girlfriend Julie, who's just the most wonderful and awesome. innocent, sweet person, and literally left work to come and and help me um, the next day to get over to my friend who's a chiropractor and like get me up and and get me because I, I was I really like I I think I I got myself straight the night before and then I was determined to go to work the next day because I was supposed to and. Um, I think I just stretched and did all these things and I overdid it. And it just, went, right. Oh no, man, we can't, we're not ready for that. Cause every wow. video I watched was like on day two, on day three. And I'm like, and I'm like on day three, I do stretches. I'm like, I'm doing that now. Uh, and maybe that wasn't the best advice uh, for myself to give myself. Jesse blaze. Uh, see, pushing this, himself. Is, this is the thing. So like, yeah. So, so um, are you are you standing up right now? Taylor's asking. If I'm standing. standing. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. standing. That's why I'm kind of like. Are you usually standing up when we're doing the podcast? Or no, not? I usually no, no. sit. Oh, okay. I usually sit. I'm sorry, bud, uh, man. That that's, that's is, is let's let's get right. let's not talk about it. Let's talk about something else. Let's get your mind. Yes, off. I am strong. Wanna... It's so funny. I literally the the other day when I was talking about it to somebody and I and I said the word weak, I felt my body like react to um, oh, like, like i said like, in we had an association with well you know my i got something in my back that's a little you know and it, and, it, and i was like whoa like, you know what that's and i was like strong strong yeah, yeah it's interesting. Strong. everything's very once strong you know once you know that like the, all the stuff we know and we talk about you know the power of words and you hear yourself saying something wrong like oh shit i just I just fucked up, <laughs> you know. I just, I just said I'm, uh, I'm poor or whatever you say, you know. It's like, and and uh, you know, the power of words, man. You gotta, it's the power of thought. We all know that, right? That's like well, it's the stream truth. of consciousness one hundred and one. Well, you know, I've been saying this is a good spiritual thing to kick off the show before we um, we talk about the thing. You know, when cool. I was younger, <clears throat> I would say that my <laughs> almost like my battle cry for uh atheism was the story of job and if you don't know the story of job from the bible essentially there's like this deal with the devil uh that god makes where he's like you know a devil says that god doesn't love him for the right reasons he just loves him because he give him everything and um you know and god's like ah now you wait you see like you know i'll take everything away from him. he'll still love me and seeing that you know like like as like like a human as a human being i was just sort of like that's like describes the worst relationship i have ever heard of <laughs> what an abusive piece of garbage <laughs> that god is if that man is wow. if that's a real being <laughs> what an abusive you know what like and Passive aggressive yeah. move, you right. know, like based on that, like like he's like <laughs> he's like, no, 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 man. Watch, I will rub his nose and shit. He's still gonna like me. <laughs> it's like, I mean, if like a, your girlfriend did that to you, everybody in your family who cared about you would be like, you need to get this motherfucker out your life, you know. <laughs> like, so funny, like this person is like not the good Bible for you. says God is passive aggressive, man. Yes, I'm like the Bible says God is a real dick sometimes, like for no for no reason. <laughs> Reason. I'd like I, I like I didn't you know Job did nothing to um it's to all volunteer. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well I'm gonna get to that in a second. <laughs> but you know, like like you know, Job did nothing within this context of this story to deserve these things. He was a grateful, uh you know, pious right. the right word, you know, pious man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it, 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 that that story really sort of disturbed me foundationally. And, um, you know, and I've, I've come to understand it in a lot of different ways, but one of the things, yeah. you know, that I see, you know, I think that the part of it with 
this conversation that Satan and God have, you know, I don't know how that could be interpreted in other ways, and maybe it can, but you putting that aside. Um, the story that Job goes through is, is the story of true appreciation. And, you know, it would be a better story if we were able to see that Job didn't necessarily appreciate these things. And in doing this thing, you know, like, and God was trying to teach him something, um, you know, this, um, you know, notion to have faith no matter what, you know, it, it is a good idea, but it's a good idea because they're not doing that to you on the other side. You're not going down the path that Job went down unless that's the energy you have to work out. Right. right and right. within that, so often everybody's journey it looks like hell you know because it tends to be based around what we have put energy into fearing mm -hmm. you know and usually it comes from a oh i want this so much i never want this to end and then it does and right. then we're like oh my goodness i can't control the universe now the reality is you know we we want to just inherently know that everything is supposed to be in line with us and there's no reason to be out of balance about it. And what we want will eventually come our way if there's nothing standing in the way, whether there's something that we can't understand standing in the way or, you know, some of our energy that is standing yeah, yeah, in the yeah. way, you know? So, right. um, you know, so that Job story, you know, I've felt a lot like Job um, of late and, um, you know, and, and that, um, what I see, I'm trying to explain this the best way with my back. Um, I, I think I've said this before, you know, we, we, we come around in the, you know, the law of correspondence and we, and we feel as though we've been here before, but it's different. And on the way up in your swing of momentum, as the momentum intensifies each time around, you're like, what the hell is that? And, you know, right, the next right. time around, you're like, what the hell is, you know, and then by the time, it gets up to its apex. You're like, I can't even take it anymore. Right, and, right, right. You know, and hopefully, usually, there's a tipping point there. You know, for you in one way, in one fashion or another. And as that clicks, that tipping point, and you start swinging back, the next time it's oh, really this again. And then the next time it's, oh, you kidding me? Right. Okay. And then All the right. next time it's okay, whatever, I'm right? Getting right. a little bit of that thing. Right. Eventually, you know, you're just like, yeah. And and at the same time, there is sort of a ramping up of what it is that you're dealing with. Right. So what it is you're dealing with is kind of soft, but you're like, okay, one more punch in the face, and you're you're softening, and now it's like a bigger punch in the face. All right, but I'm I'm getting on to you. And I mean, and literally this like thing, this night of my back going out, I view it as the backwards momentum shift of the big punch in the face that was meant to shake me to my core or make me go, no, I have faith and it's okay. And I've been working on all these things. And this is just a very good signpost for me, but I got to be active. The other day I went for a walk instead of going to the gym, probably should have went to the gym. You know, there, there's, you know, I've been trying to be more active. I right. want to stick to that. I don't want to like coddle. Right, but also, you know, be... like you said, you don't want to go to day three when you haven't done day one or two yet. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, in the case of this thing, I mean, I got an airplane flight, you know, on Saturday and I got to work right, on right, Friday. Right. So, you know, I got to get myself going within the, within the right fashion. And I mean, generally speaking, I've been able to get myself together with these things pretty good. I think I just really kind of, Ooh, I just gave myself a nice little pinch in my back. So if there's any Reiki masters out there, <laughs> Who want to send me some good Reiki love to my lower back? Oh I yeah, it. there probably is a couple of this thing. Nice. Yeah. So it. it's interesting. I just I want to just mention a couple of things. A couple of our listeners are, uh, and let me know when our guest is in the back room. By the way, uh, our guest is in the back room, okay. waiting waiting patiently. But uh, we had uh, a couple of our our viewers, uh, Angela and uh, Ninja Kitty, talking about their back surgeries and things. So you're not alone. You know, we're all kind of dealing with our Things, let, let, yeah. let me say one thing about about that before we okay. go on. It just since since it, it is resonating with the, the crew. Yeah. Um, there, I I watched my um, my ex father in law, uh, Paul Story, go through so much pain with his back. He's not the only one, um, but really surgeries and things and so many times of of hope and false hope and and really you know it, it killed me. 
uh, seeing him in so many, because it tends to be, I think, the mightiest of us, the most active of, of us, the people who are the most helpful. We burn ourselves out. And, um, you know, and, and the people who, who really, you know, want to get in there, all of a sudden they're like, man, I can't get in there anymore. All I want to do is take care of the other people. And obviously I'm not very good at taking care of myself because look where I am. And, um, you know, and, and we really, uh, we, we need to um, hold on to hope. And, um, and I think try to stay away from these surgeries. There's a lot of different people mm -hmm. who you can talk to from chiropractors and uh, acupuncturists and, and other avenues. Uh, you know, most of I've come to believe this is my opinion. You know, uh, you, know you would say consult. Right. Everybody's doctor, different, but, but, but I'm with but you. At yeah. the end of the day, um, it, the majority of, of the problems within our system are imbalances in our body. Um, you know, and granted, there are usually emotional imbalances and stuff, and these things might come up as you work on these physical imbalances. But if you get your body functioning more correctly and you haven't already been intervened with a lot of surgeries and stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of relief to be had. And, and I have had a lot of relief. My lower back's the trickiest one because my hips were literally flipped into a weird position. So, um, you know, my hips are now straight and my spine's normally straight, but occasionally I'll have my lower back pop out on me at the moment, but I think this is the end of it for me. And, uh, you know, thinking positively, whether it happens again or not, you know, it doesn't matter staying positive and keeping your eye on the prize, believing that it is possible to get over it is the most totally. important thing. You know, don't totally. just, you know, if it, I don't care, you know, my, my chiropractor, who's a really good friend of mine, but, uh, you know, my girlfriend, after we left, she was like, he's kind of negative, you know, like, like, I don't think that's true that you're going to take, it's going to take this long. And the, cause he was saying all these things about how long it was going to take me to right. recover. And I was like, I, I'm right with you. Every time he said it, I was like, nah, no, I'm, I'm going to be fine. You know, <laughs> but, it, he, but right, right, right. You know, some people will say that. Some doctors will say that to you. And honestly, it makes me so upset because, you know, what do we learn yeah. from Patch Adams? It's like, you know, laughter, a light heart. That right. helps the medicine. Right. That helps you to to get over things. The placebo medicine wins so much of the time. It's it's your attitude. Those are those are big, other bigger conversations. Yeah, but but uh, seriously, really, don't, yeah. don't 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 lose hope. Keep your attitude right and uh, keep exploring other means of of getting at it. Because I'm making progress with it, despite the fact that I just had a little absolutely. Problem with it oh, what's weekend. up, Mandy? We I see Mandy. Right. So there. tonight we've got a fabulous guest, and we're going to tell you at the end of the show about our uh, calendar for next month. Uh, we'll be announcing that. But uh, right now, uh, we're going to be bringing uh, my, my friend uh, Tanya onto the show. Uh, and yes. Tanya is, so is more than my friend. She is a member of my family. That's so uh, awesome. She is a fiance to my brother, Cody Snyder, who we had on the show, um, I guess, a month or two ago now. Yep. Um, and, um, you know, and Tanya, a little bit of her story is connected to cross his paths, I, I think, with Cody's a little bit. And, uh, and hopefully uh, she can uh, uh, it'll give you a little bit of. Um, of extra depth to some of the things that my brother is is getting to learn as he gets to journey with um with uh, tanya on this uh, spiritual path because yes. cody was focusing very much on um the reiki um uh, you know his, his experience you know his uh you know opening up was you know based around that so much mm -hmm. and i, I think uh, tanya's going to talk to us a lot about her experiences dealing with aliens and the, the simulation awesome so awesome. i'm really excited to um work, i did a little uh oh, I did oh, a little, yeah. do you want to do it yeah yeah i, I, know you're still good. Yeah, I did a little digging and uh you know i know that we brought her here to tell her her uh awesome stories about her experiences but um she's also very super talented and oh, yeah. um and i would love to just sh share her her reel it's very quick it's a minute oh long. yeah that's a great Thank all right so much. awesome Perfect. so here we yeah. go i'm gonna i'm gonna play her reel everybody's gonna Mama. look Happen to have any change, would you? Much obliged. I hope you're still serving breakfast. So cool.
so great. Dude. Final dude. Come on, just like Boy Scouts. It's 110 degrees out here, and you're making a fire. Ah! Oh my god. Ah! Okay, uh, hey, are you done? Oh! Oh, Bam. that's so awesome. Thanks oh for my God. that out, Michael. How amazing. How freaking oh. amazing. I'm so excited to meet her. Well, so without gonna... further ado, yeah. can we bring on a uh, brilliant director, uh, close friend, Here's Tanya you Dahl. Oh, bam. Hello. Hi. Hey, beautiful. How's hey. it going? Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you totally. great. You sound great. Okay, perfect. I put my little... My little mic, I saw your mics, and I'm like, damn it, I need to get it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad nice nice horse. Going? I like your horse. Yeah. Oh, wait, where is it? This way? Yes. Yeah, see, I actually saw this this painting like in a store, and I wanted it for years, but I couldn't get myself to spend like $1,000 on a print. Uh, and then finally one day it was on sale, and I was like, I'm doing it. And it's crazy. This guy, actually, his name's James Way, and his canvases are 40 feet wide. Wow. So everything he paints has so much detail. So when they take the print and shrink it down, all of a sudden you can see like all the details. Oh, it's really cool. Amazing. Wow, that is yeah. really cool. Oh, I that's love that. Awesome. Welcome. So, welcome to our show. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're yeah. so welcome. I finally, oh, well, I have to reveal this later, but, but uh, you know, I'm slowly but surely getting through the family. And uh, so it's really uh, <laughs> nice to uh, nice to see your face here and to have your uh, part of the story. You know, generally uh, what we do is, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are awakening uh, to further experiences in consciousness. And uh, so much of the people, I, I know myself included, we feel crazy uh, as as things happen to us that nobody has ever reported back to you know us before. And I think everybody's story is so unique. Everybody's journey is so unique. But the one way to combat the fact that one story doesn't sound like yours, the next one doesn't sound like yours, is just a lot of them. A lot of people explaining how they started to think that maybe there's a lot more going on and I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to know more about it. And, uh, you know, but before we get into your story, which I would love to hear, you know, from the very beginning, but, uh, <laughs> we always like to ask, what is your definition of consciousness? Oh, I honestly think it's, I mean, living from a place of love in every single respect from loving the existence that you have, be it good or bad. It's um, loving everything around you and really just being like present and really discovering the, like, the magnificence of this world that we're in. And then once you do that, expanding your consciousness into greater, greater realms of you know consciousness or like extraterrestrials and deities and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. things that I, sorry, somebody's walking around back, Cody. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, that's, I think it's just really, it's coming from a space of love, loving yourself fully, right. Coming like back home mm -hmm. to yourself mm -hmm. and then spreading that love and that healing with as many people as you possibly can. The ding, ding, stream ding. of love. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. ding. I was like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the rightest answer we've gotten yet. Yeah. Cause this, yeah. that I, I think that is the closest to the definition that Michael and I mean, you know, you know, within this, cause at the end of the day, for you know for us you know i think maybe we've broken it down before with each other as as sort of conscious of the oneness you know like like being conscious of what the reality is which is not a bunch of separate things a bunch of things that are me and i'm gonna have to pay that bill with me later you know yeah. because I, I would like the bill paid with me and if it's me you know like it, it's it's all equal and that notion of going around taking more than you should isn't you know it, it's just not viable it, 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 once you become conscious of what we're actually in which is just a connected being yeah uh, of loving energy you yeah. know, which is which is even almost like a misnomer like in terms of interpretation because like we hear love and we think of like romantic love but right. you know it's it's almost just this magnetism 
of of oneness, you know, of of a vibration that is vibrating together as one thing. You know, like one of my early ayahuasca experiences, I remember, um, was being shown how uh, sort of detrimental it is to us the way we're taught about our health. They break apart all of our systems into this system and that system and this system and that system and this system. And they were like, no, it's just one. It's just one thing. It's one harmonious thing. And when someone looks at your system and isn't looking about how this is affecting the other systems and all these, they're not thinking correctly about what they're really looking at. The idea that we can go remove this appendix. It doesn't do anything. You know, we don't know what it does. And right. It's part of the one system, you know, so I tend not to you know, try to avoid all of the removing anything from me. <laughs> if, if possible, <laughs> Don't we all? Because I really think that <laughs> it's all <laughs> meant to be the one thing that it, that it is. Yeah. You know? So anyway. Um, it's funny uh, yeah, the, sure. what you were talking about with the, the oneness thing. So something that's really actually changed the way that I view the world is working with like not like plant medicines but actual plants themselves like having plants because you have to understand that plants if you give too much or you give too little they die right so that's that's like neutrality that's like living in this mm -hmm. world it's being able Balance. to not give too much of yourself where you're depleted mm -hmm. or taking too much or you know whatever you have to like just enough just enough so everything's stable and also the cool thing about plants is it's really got me into insects like I think bugs are the coolest things ever. And I have like, I've always like taken spiders outside and everything, but never to the point of like sitting there and just staring at the bugs and be like, wow, right? you are so magnificent. Look how cool you are, you know? Right. Anyways, and that's the whole connectedness. It's like down to like the tiniest little bit and how each sure. little organism has such an important role to play in like the yeah. grand scheme of things. Once you understand what they're doing, you know, it's like it's like within the X-Men yeah. team. You're like, oh, what is that guy? Oh, he does this. That makes him. Good. It's like, oh, the answer. Do, oh, OK. And they're yes. doing that and they're adding that to the. Oh, OK. And he's killing all of the other bugs that I don't like. OK, right. good. I, you know, right. It really does. It really does make them so much more. Uh, 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 it's an ecosystem just like the body is one the system is one you know right. when you it, when i was down in peru doing ayahuasca you know they brought us through um their farming and, and all of the techniques that are going on because it's a really terrible thing when the western world comes over to a lot of these countries our our needs are sometimes very singular oh they want coffee or they want chocolate or they want this and the villagers have an opportunity to sort of be head and shoulders richer than the other people in their you know village all of a sudden and they go and they just tear down parts of the forage and uh, forest and plant a bunch of uh, chocolate and then a whole bunch of other people do it because they're like oh they made some money too and before you know it the forest is getting really imbalanced with one crop that's diminishing returns in the soil and all these other different things that happen when you're just doing one thing too much and it happens mm -hmm. all across the world uh, in so many different fashions. There's so, a beautiful documentary okay. about that. I think it's called. It's is it about permaculture. It's about. It's called something. The ground. Um, and it's. It just came out, and it's all about how we've depleted our soil, and that's why, like, yeah. even through like the dust bowl and everything, like all that stuff is because we've depleted all the nutrients in the soil, and now our soil is just like barren because we've just yeah. been growing corn or like one because particular crop. It's not a mix, so it's, you know, it's not. Yeah, the clay it's, it's interesting anymore. you're saying that because I I read something about bugs recently that you know everything everything has its purpose and we're the humans are the only species that doesn't really like do its thing for the <laughs> earth like we we're just like you know not me personally but you know as a species we're just yeah. like doing everything for ourselves and not as part of that ecosystem. Right. Wow. Well, yeah. It's, wow. When you think about it like that, it's really yeah. like. Well, and all the, yeah. every other creature does We're what the freeloaders on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> totally <laughs> Damn it. destroyers. But if Hopefully, you think about, most of us are feeding each other. And also, yeah. though, if you look at like we're talking about like the smallest like microorganisms and stuff, when people are like, oh, we are so like minuscule in the grand scheme of things. It's like, yeah, but again, even down to the bugs, like every single one of them has a purpose. There's a reason why each one of them is there. So people are like, oh, I'm, I maybe I'll just like if I don't mean anything, I'm just going to kill myself or whatever. And you're like, no, you don't even realize. Maybe you just don't understand why you're here. Right. But like. In the grand scheme of things, like you actually have a very important job here, and we all do. If we're following our joy and following our passions, then like we are expressing ourselves, and that's our job. 
Exactly. Yeah, and and yeah. you were there when I, I mean, I, I had the realization shortly before this, but I mean, I got on my, on my knees and I kissed uh, your man's feet um, <laughs> for doing what I knew I couldn't do. I thought I, I had seen that I was supposed to connect with my family in the spiritual way. We're supposed to sit down and like have this spiritual circle. I I'd mentioned it to Michael's in years earlier and I was just sort of like, but I don't, I don't know how that's happening. I'm not, I can't do that. And when Cody called me, I'd like, you know, one, it freed me. And then it freed me to have perspective, to recognize how we're just all so integral to each other without the one. There is no other without the one we can't, move forward as this one helps this one build you know we, we we build on each other's momentum we build on each other's encouragement and uh you know and, and energy uh, or we diminish each other's energy I, and it goes kind of one way or the other it doesn't just kind of stay stagnant it doesn't either... right <laughs> i like the noises yeah <laughs> we're all part of a universal trail mix yes yes indeed. i love that so so Tanya, if you will, you know, as I always say to our guests, uh, you know, the, the floor is yours. We're interested in your story and we would just, you know, love to listen us and our, 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 our listeners. And, and, uh, you know, of course we'll ask questions and interject if we, if we want to try to guide the audience a little bit more, yeah. what you're saying or whatever, but, um, you know, we would love to hear what was your journey? Where, where did you go from, you know, a normal kid and so, and then start going like hey wait a second wait there's a some second. things and i'm thinking maybe i should there's take these things. things seriously because obviously you've been seeing some things um yeah. in some of your more uh recent life so the floor is yeah yours. okay well first of all um michael thank you so much for playing my reel that was really sweet um awesome. So that actually has uh, a lot of significance to my story. So um, I used to, so I was a commercial director. I still do commercial directing here and there, but not as much anymore. I'm transitioning uh, what I'm doing in life at the moment. And um, so all of my work, I was constantly trying to make light of aliens because they actually scared me so much. So my whole life, I've grown up always having like a sixth sense, being able to see ghosts and I could see auras on people and all that. And I live in a constant state of fear, like constantly um, when the next thing was going to happen because I was having the craziest things. It was just getting more and more in my face as uh, as the time went on. So now real quick, just, yeah. to, just to clarify. So, so as a child, like how old were you? You could see auras, you could see the colors of the energy fields around people's yeah. bodies. Yeah. And, since and, and is that I was still like, true? Yeah. So that ha started happening. I mean, the, the earliest I can remember the first, um, <laughs> like sort of supernatural sort of thing that happened. I was like five years old and, uh, and it's funny because I always thought like everyone, like every house I ever moved into is just haunted. I'm like, oh, that's just all haunted. I keep moving into the wrong houses. But, you know, they they always say like places aren't haunted, people are. But I don't now, now I'm like, oh, no, I just am like somehow open sensitive. to that. I'm just sensitive to that. And I've been able to, you know, experience that my whole life. So my, I remember my dad always loved the X-Files, right? That was like his show. And so he would play the X-Files and I was so terrified of aliens that I literally would like plug my ears and I'd be like, no, nah! I'd like run into the other room because I did not want to hear the X-Files theme song because to me that was like scary aliens are going to attack me. Yes. And it's so funny. So <laughs> going <laughs> in... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good thing now it doesn't bother me. Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm like hearing it in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even watch the show, but but, yeah, but I'm like, I remember that noise. It yeah, was, it was kind of a spooky noise. It was yeah, totally. spooky, especially totally, for the totally. kid. It was spooky. It was like an alien western. <laughs> I like that. I like it. But don't forget the doodle 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 in the background. Yeah. You know, there's like that little just. Yeah. Yes, and that. Okay, so it's like a three part harmony right here. We've got. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I was like, I lived in a constant state of terror, and uh, then, so I would 
when I would direct stuff, I was a creative director at an agency and we did a lot of commercials. And so I was constantly trying to get um, uh, ETs and monsters and anything that was sort of like supernatural or fantasy, right? To be in the commercials. And I'm talking my clients into that is always- I was gonna say, you had, you had so many different things. I mean, mermaids and leprechauns <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and as we uh, said, aliens. Uh, but yeah. I mean, and, and, and then so many different interesting visuals and, yeah. you know, kind of biz you know, fun bizarreness. It really, it's- it, I totally get it. Things that like would scare riddle. you that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I was always fascinated by the supernatural, um, obviously, but at the same time terrified of it. But it was like my favorite thing to talk about too. So even like I was in a band for years and all we would listen to was Coast to Coast. Do you know oh, Coast I to love Coast? Coast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go to Coast to Coast every week just to see if they found any werewolves or Bigfoot or anything new. <laughs> it was so fun. I remember going, when we would go on tour, we would always like play Coast to Coast. That was like our our thing in the in the van. We'd be like, yeah, it's Coast to Coast. Uh, looking at the black eyed children now and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, I lived in a constant state of fear. <laughs> and uh, then it's funny because, so I had been, I did an Akashic Records reading and, uh, the woman told me, she was like, mother ayahuasca is calling to you. And I was like, okay. I had just heard about ayahuasca from my friends, Danielle and Eric. And, um, I still like hadn't done anything with it. Cause I didn't, I thought I had to go to Peru or I had to do something like that. And then I met Cody uh, randomly at a Starbucks on the way down from Lake Arrowhead Hill after Christmas. And we got to talking and um, like ended up meeting up and talking about everything. And we realized we had like the same story. We we're both like in bands. We were both directors. We both were terrified of extraterrestrials. Wow. And we were like, okay, this is strange. And he goes, you need to go to ayahuasca. And I'm like, okay, this is the third time I've heard about wow. this. And there happened to be uh, a circle that I could go to. And actually, Jesse, your mom is the reason why I went. You told me that today. Yeah. So I had never, like, uh, I didn't want to go. So I was like, oh, if it's not in Peru, like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I need to go, like, to Authentic, where yeah. the medicine's from, right? Mm -hmm. And then Cody was like, well, you know, like, if you do it in the United States, then, like, at least you know, you know, there's a hospital down the road. There's, like, your emergency contact, blah, 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 blah. It'll just make you feel, like, safer. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. And then... I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And then your mom was going and I was like, wait, your mom's going. Okay, if Cody's mom's going, I'm gonna go, whatever, I'll do it. So crazy. it was literally in that ayahuasca ceremony, like right in the beginning. Um, so I go in and there's all these, so when you go to ayahuasca, there's a lot of like fractals. People have probably seen the images of um, people doing their artistic renditions of uh, what ayahuasca looks like. Mm -hmm. And so I see all these fractals, but like I can see something above it. And I'm like, hey, I there's like somebody up there. And I'm like, I can see you guys. I'm like, I don't like, I don't, I don't know what's happening right now, but, and then all of a sudden they just start bombarding me with all this information, like just so much information about how this world works, like everything, like trying to like just break my brain open or something, I don't know. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is so much. But, um, so then they like ended up taking me to this room with this fluff, fluffy purple cat because I just needed to be calm for a second. I was like, I just need to feel loved for like a second and calm. So I've gotten into this room, this giant fluffy purple cat with three eyes and it had a snake body, but it was fluffy. And I was like curled up in it and it was purring and like vibrating my body. And it was like this unconditional love. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then all these eyeballs start opening around on its body. And I was like, oh, okay. And like love crystals were coming out of it. And it's like, it's blinking, it's ridiculous. So, um, so after that, I get like completely thrown back into the fractal world. And I'm like, all right, I can still see you guys, but I can feel like I'm getting worked on like physical, like poking and prodding. And I'm like, this is bizarre. Okay. And so I'm like, Hey, I like, I know that these fractals are just like a distraction or something. I need to see you, please. I'm not afraid. Like I really just need to see who you are. So the room, like I was just back in the room with everybody and I'm like, Oh, I'm back here again. 
I saw these energetic tubes coming from the ceiling and attaching to each of the people. And I could see the energy coming down and hitting the people and it would, they would react as soon as the energy would hit them. And I was like, Whoa, what? Like what, what's happening? This is so bizarre. And I'm like, okay, but, but where are you guys? Like, where are you? And I like looked up and all of a sudden, all of these alien faces started appearing like right, right here, like on top of me. And I was, I started crying and I was like, oh my God, my beautiful friends, I'm home. That was my reaction. <laughs> and like coming from a girl that's terrified of ETs, like terrified, the fact that a bunch of different looking ETs appeared in front of me, like their faces, like super close to me and they're poking and prodding me. And that was my reaction is my beautiful so you must have been, home. You must've been feeling something like, you must have been feeling that unconditional love kind of thing, like oh yes, at that moment, you know, like absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It wow. literally, I'd never set, felt that sense of home before. Like, wow. I I have wonderful parents, I have wonderful friends. Like, I constantly feel like loved and supported in everything in my life. But I mean, this That's sense different. of home was unlike mm -hmm. anything that I've ever experienced before. Wow, so cool. Yeah. So after, um, that experience, um, I was like, okay, they're ETs and I guess they're friendly. Like this is not the propaganda I've been shown in every movie ever. Um, so, um, through like meditation, I started learning to channel and these like messages start coming to me. And then, um, this collective, of three ETs that call themselves We the Three <laughs> started speaking to me like as a collective. So they speak as one, but they're three ETs. And Cody's seen them. They're um, tall, thin, blue beings in, in like robes. Wow. <laughs> so so they're, all the same, they're all the same race. These ones are all the same. Yeah. Okay. And from what I'm like understanding, because I try not to say anything until they give me the information. Um, but from what I've gathered is that they're, um, they're Arcturians, they're 11th dimensional Arcturians and they, they've kind of called themselves like great ancient beings. Like they're really like ancient and they're like part of the collective that created our earthly realm. Okay. So like mm -hmm. earth school, they, they're the ones that created earth school with other beings from other dimensions but this is an amazing story so can i <laughs> can i interrupt you for a second and ask absolutely so um what is that you just you know for other people out there who have less experience with ayahuasca myself and many 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 other people have done ayahuasca and never actually had any sort of contact whatsoever with any sort of aliens or whatever so i just want everybody to know that's not always the case for no. everybody so what? For most, it's not. Well, yes. So for so, what is the relationship, and if you know and understand on any level, between uh, the uh, connectivity of ayahuasca that has brought you this connection to your, you know, spiritual brothers and sisters? Well, um, in Peru, they actually talk about the um, extraterrestrials as uh, the doctorcitos. So they're the doctors. They're the ones that do like the physical work on you. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Why I felt like poking and prodding. And the crazy thing is, if you think about it, when people are like, oh, I got abducted by aliens, what happens to them? They're literally on an operating room table and freaking out because they're doing like surgery to them, right? right. Um, so it's just funny because now when I hear these stories of alien abductions, I'm like, yeah, I've been there. I'm like, they're, they're good. They're, they're trying to help you. <laughs> like if you just calm down a little bit, <laughs> they're just trying to help. Um, but yeah, um, I, I don't really know how to say this. I don't know how to say this. Um, so they basically have told me that I was like a little avatar cause we're all avatars, right? So our avatars and these like beings like speak through me. So they're the ones that have like decided to speak through me and, I believe every single person has guides that are that want to speak to them all the time. Like this is not unique to me. It's just that I have opened myself up in a way where I can allow this to um, like other higher dimensions to be able to speak to me. And right. everyone has this ability. This is not like unique. It's like your birthright to be able to do this. It's just opening yourself up, being in a mode of surrender 
-hmm. and um, you have to like meet their vibration because their vibration is really high. So have you ever like walked in uh, a room somewhere and you get like a weird feeling and it feels like kind of like scary and you're like, whoo, what is that? Right. So beings that have um, so either people that have passed or um, interdimensional beings have a higher vibration. So when we die, we don't really die. We just pass on to a different vibration. It's just like waking up in another vibration and going on to a different existence. But their vibration is so high and it can feel overwhelming when they come in. You're like, oh, that's scary. I don't like that. I don't like that. And you can like feel them like behind you or on the sides of you because like we don't even realize what's around us all the time. Like there would probably be just so many things all around us that we have no idea even live in our house, you know? <laughs> and it's just because they're at a different vibration. Right. So when you go into channeling these beings or your guides or whoever you're wanting to channel, it's really like it's breath work. It's a lot of breath work to kind of bring in a lot of oxygen. And then you ask them to meet their vibration. So you can literally feel like this fluctuation happening in your body of the vibration as they you raise your vibration and they lower theirs in order to meet you in the middle because they can't lower theirs completely to where we are. We have to meet them halfway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I, so I have a couple questions for you, actually. Um, so, I like I, I found your forgive Rio, me for wincing. By the way, my my back is bothering oh, me a little bit. For baby. Me. Oh. Poor Jesse. So if you see um, me make a face, it's not it's not you guys. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's like um, just angry in the corner. <laughs> so, so I I I'm gonna actually pop it up right now. I have. Uh, I did see, ba 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 boom. There's your website, um, so people can check you out and what you're all about there. But and I saw you had a YouTube channel, um, and I saw some things about you know meditation and some some kind of videos that you did. But I didn't see the channeling stuff. Is that on there? Do you do that? So Not I publicly or I actually have been using TikTok. So TikTok okay. is my go-to now. Um, actually, today I reached a hundred thousand friends on Ooh. there. Nice. So, so you're uh, doing channeling on TikTok? No, 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 no. Oh, so my okay. channeling's different. Like I, okay. I'm not like Bashar or something where I'm just like, and then the beings came. And okay, so you're not me. a you're not a trance channel. You're you. No. it's different. Okay, it's a, it's a different sort of channeling. Uh, that's the thing. There are many different forms of yep. of channeling. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people get like downloads, like all of a sudden just like drops of information, which mm -hmm. I'm sure all of you have had stuff like that. Where all of a sudden you're like, mm -hmm. I don't know that information. Where did that come from? <laughs> Yeah, that sort of thing. So that's yeah. more of my work. When right. I did the Akashic Record reading myself, I think the same one that you had done, which I came after listening to my entire family do do them, Oop. and their readings were so that's on the money. Thing. Hold on. Um, but uh, when I did mine, I asked them what I was, because, again, I don't do that. I, I'm not a Bashir kind of whatever. Um, I like to say sometimes I, I know stuff. Um, and uh, and they, they, they said that I was a spiritual conduit. Have you ever had any sort of like communication as to what, you know, like what your, is it, is it something similar like that? Like you're being a, a connected to the spirit world essentially. Um, they keep calling me an alchemist. Okay. Um, so, so what does that mean? Um, what does that mean to you? when you're Right. Being... Um, so how they've explained it is that I transmute energy. So mm -hmm. um, by like being around someone or talking to them, I can literally like shift their energy just by like being uh, around them and like speaking to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which there's, there's a lot of people that are like that. Like, again, this is not unique to me. There's a lot of people like this, mm -hmm. but that's, that's like what they've always, they keep saying is that I am a, like an alchemist. I, I transmute energy here. And that's like my main job is to basically clear myself so they can like put the messages out there. And then uh, to be able to transmute energy of people that are, around me or the people that I speak to or clients or whatever it may be. And for those of you who don't know what alchemy is, you know, so often we're talking about like, Oh, lead to gold and stuff, but really high, at a high level, alchemy is just about changing the idea, the energy behind a thing. You know, you feel right. bad about the thing. Well, we're going to shift that energy to feeling good yeah. about the thing. You right. feel this way about the thing. We're going to change it to feeling this way. So, so she's somebody who's able to help, you know, redirect people's momentum, which we always like to talk about on the show, you know, she, and that's a, a real benefit because most people, we really can't govern our, uh, and change our own momentum. We're just kind of lost within it. All um, right. So question for you. Um, so this one's a little bit like of a, like off the beaten path one, but, um, 
uh, I'll say I'll, I'll leave out names, but um, I've come to some to some thoughts. You know how we have um, the I guess it's in Norway where they send out the um, uh, the alchemist ladies or whatever to go talk to nature and make sure they don't build a highway in the wrong place because there are fairy mounds and energetic you know places of significance have you ever heard of this i, I don't, don't but I, I love it oh yeah so i i'm not sure if it's norway i think it is but there's like one one country where they still to this day before they build a highway or do any sort of construction they consult with the spirits and i think I, i've always known that there were places of significance on the planet nexus points ley lines these things and, and granted i knew that because i played a science fiction game that me and my brothers played called riffs which really like set us up for a high level understanding of all sorts of spiritual thought because it's all broken down into the stats of your characters. And if you play one of those characters, you got to understand how these things work, how magic works and all their magic is based on real stuff. So you would learn about ley lines and nexus points, points on the earth where there is energy that's coming about, you know, things like uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it? Stonehenge would be like a significant nexus point of energy or something like that. So right. all that said, you know, you talked about every house I went to was haunted. Is it more? Is it also possible that because the universe is able to work things out in 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 the necessary ways, that you could have been brought to a home that was built at a nexus, at an opening in reality? These openings, these these points of connection with the other realities, are only in so many places. Is it possible? that you and other people who I won't mention their homes <laughs> might be in a place where there is access. And that's why they keep, because these people have to come through that passageway on some level to come into our world. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense because every time I have like gotten a house or moved or whatever, it's always been kind of in a strange way where it's not what I was expecting. And then all of a sudden I end up there. So that that kind of makes sense, but I, I like it, Jesse. I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah. See, the thing is, so the place that uh, I live right now, this place doesn't have like uh, like a weird energy. But you want to hear a really strange ghost story that happened here? Yeah, of course. Okay. I tell you, because it's so <laughs> wild. It was the last one that happened before ayahuasca, because it was just like too much for me to handle. So. I wake up in the morning, I get my coffee, do all the things. And I'm like, I'm going to go get my nails done today and I'm going to go get some food and then I'll come back. So I, I was in the house for a while, left. This is like 11 a.m. Leave the house and I come back at probably around like one o'clock. So one o'clock, I have my food. I like put it in the living room and I go to use the restroom and I look on the ground in my hallway and there's a puddle like this big in my hallway of like cloudy yellow something. And I'm like, what the hell? And so like I like get on my hands and knees, I'm like, like smelling it. I'm like, oh my God, it's urine. Like the most potent urine you've ever smelled. Like if a cat was like spraying somewhere, right? And so I start freaking out. I call my friend who like has access to like security if I need it. And I'm like, what do I do? He's getting on a plane. And I'm like, he's like, I need you to open or check all the windows, check all the doors, see if any, if there's any way somebody could have got in because nobody had a key to my place. And I was like, this is so bizarre. I look at everything. Everything is totally shut. There's, there's nothing, right? So I like reach out to my management. Uh, like the management company. And I'm like, you, did somebody come into my apartment? There's pee on the ground. They're like, what? And I'm like, there's pee in my hallway. <laughs> and so out of nowhere, I get a text from my grandma's friend who's a psychic. And she goes, I feel like you and I need to talk. And I was like, that's weird. And I'm like, actually, Lisa, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, there's pee in my hallway. And she goes, oh, she was like, I understand. She was like, so you and I are dealing with the same thing right now. Okay. She's like, um, she's like, uh, does the P lead? Oh, she goes, what were you doing last night? And I said, I don't know. My friend Jen came over and we were just hanging out. She goes, no, what did you do last night? I was like, we read tarot cards. She was like, there it is. She's like, okay. Uh, and I like, wasn't into tarot reading at that time. Like I really hadn't read tarot. And so Jen, my friend who had been over, she had just gotten back from Georgia. She was there shooting a movie for like three months. And she told me that a lot of weird stuff was happening there. And she like just really needed, she'd just come back like two days prior. So 
she like said there's a bunch of weird stuff happening and i was like well let's like read some tarot cards and let's like figure out what's going on and again i had not really been reading tarot cards or doing anything and so um i'm i'm texting with lisa and she goes does the p lead to where you were sitting when you were reading the tarot cards and i was like no it's in the hallway she was like check and i so i get on my hands and knees and sure enough there's a fucking like strip of P leading to the chair that I was sitting, which is that chair right there. Holy shit. <laughs> I was sitting right there. And I was like, oh my God, Lisa, I was like, there is, it leads right to the chair. And she goes, are there more, are there, is there more P circling where you were sitting? And I'm like, no, that was it. And she was like, go check. So of <laughs> course, around my table, there are drops of P or things of P like this big circling the entire table. And I'm like, this is so crazy. What is happening? And she goes, is there a closet next to where you're sitting? And I'm like, yes. And as you can see right there, that closet door right there. And there's a weird lock on that door that like, you know, like a latch, like on the outside. I'm like, why do you need a latch on the outside of a closet is the real question, right? Right. And she goes, well, at least you know where it's hiding. And I'm like, <laughs> what? what do you mean it's in the closet what are you talking about so she goes okay she was like i need you to anoint the house and she's like I, I, she sends me this whole thing of what to say and i have to use oil and like anoint the house so i call jen and i'm like jen something weird has happened and she she like calls me and she's working at warner brothers at the time and she calls me and she goes okay tanya something weird happened to me last night when i left your house she's like the moment i pulled up her neighbor who literally had the door across from hers threw himself in front of a car moments before she got there. And he was laying in the street, like laying there. And she then, then she in the middle of the night finds herself, like she doesn't sleepwalk, finds herself walking out her front door. And so she's like, oh my God. She was like, something weird is happening. And she's like, I can't even think right now. I'm leaving work. I'm going to come over. And I'm like, okay, come over and help me anoint the house. Cause I, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh so. So I like start like anointing the house and reading this thing because Lisa's very Christian. And so like, everything is like in the name of the father, like <laughs> me, demon, you know, <laughs> so I'm like anointing the house, but I like, I'm feeling this like really like heavy feeling on my chest. And I'm like, Oh, something's weird here. So I, um, so I call Lisa and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. It's like hard to breathe. And she goes, she calls me. She goes, put me on speakerphone. Take me to the closet. I'm like, okay. So I have her on speakerphone in front of the closet. And I'm telling Jen, like, record this. Record record what she's saying so we can take that to your house and do it too. And so she does this whole exorcism on the house. And the person I was seeing at the time, I was like, hey, just so you know, like, I'm coming over for the weekend. This is on a Thursday. I'm like, I'm just going to be there for a couple of days, just so you know. Um, and uh, we go to Jen's house we do like play the audio thing or whatever. And Lisa calls and she goes, who has the Ouija board? And I'm like, uh, I, I don't. And Jen goes, I do. And she goes, you need to burn that right now. So I go and like burn this Ouija board. This black smoke is coming out and this high pitch, like, ee! like screeching oh noise is coming out of the fire. And we're like, Oh my God. Like just this billow of smoke. It was, terrible for environment. Sorry. Um, so we do the whole thing. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go pick up some, um, food for, for me, my, my boyfriend at the time. And so I go to Paquito Mas, which is like this burrito place down the road. And I'm like waiting in line for my food. And there's like light mariachi music playing in the background. And all of a sudden it just starts like this screeching, the same screeching from the fire goes, over the speakers, everyone in the restaurant's plugging their ears like, oh my God, oh my God, what is that? They're, the guys in the back are trying to fix the radio, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden it cuts to the super, super loud static. And then right back to light mariachi music. And everyone's looking around like, what the fuck just happened? What is going on? And I'm like, and then they, oh, and by the way, I'm so sorry. This all happened right when they were like, Tanya, like my food order, right? Tanya, and it was like, <laughs> reaching and i was like this is the most horrifying thing ever so i like, that guy to my was like fuck you, Tanya. <laughs> right. you I, i'm I'm, a, I'm imagining the scene when uh satan gets sucked into hell by tenacious d fuck you 
Jables. Fuck yeah. you, tenacious dreams. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um. So yeah. So anyways, I like call Lisa and I'm like, I don't know what just happened. She's like, Oh, they're gonna be messing with you for a little bit, but don't worry. Like you're fine. And so like, that was the type of stuff that I was dealing with, like all the time, like really crazy shit, like ghost pee. And so that uh, that's why I was living like in a constant state of fear because I was, was going to say, was this before you were living in fear or after? You was, you know, this is before while wow. I was still this living is, in fear. Crazy. That, that is definitely the craziest story I think we've ever had on this show. <laughs> For sure. the ghost P. Yeah, I was gonna say she's a colorful director. She's a colorful <laughs> storyteller. It's uh, it, it's I I love you, Tanya. You're the best. I have, I have um, so many questions for you, Tanya, about oh, the, your your channeling and the Arturians and all of the things. I know we haven't even got to Alien City. I know, yet. right? I, I feel like we need to wrap up the conversation we've already had so that we can uh, bring her back another time and expand okay. on some other things. How does that sound? I think we're so, gonna have to do that. So to wrap up this conversation, I guess you know, just because there's you know a certain amount of mystery still surrounding the um, you know your connection to these aliens and them you know doing things to you whatnot. So you know, have you what what have they done to you? you know, were there effects and changes in your life based on things that have happened? You know, where does the story kind of end and wrap up so that we can send you home and we'll have you back another time? Okay. Well, um, so they, so I'm just going to tell you really quick though. Um, they, they showed me the, the simulation that we're living in and that it's like a big giant game for self-knowledge, right? So God like fractions itself off source, God, whatever you like to call it, fractions itself off and go, it created like a dimension. And then when those beings woke up, they created another dimension because we're all creators, because we're all source consciousness. So once we awaken fully, we can become actual creators and put our consciousness into other life. So that's what like all the dimensions are. It's literally just a higher vibration of beings that have created um, and projected their consciousness from source into like a game basically for ultimate self-knowledge. And so they, they have like showed me how this game works and they're slowly giving me more and more information because if they give me too much it freaks me out and then all of a sudden i'm like completely just i don't want to talk to anybody or anything for like two weeks and i'm just like i can't even process this information it's just too much mm-hmm. so um yeah so these beings have showed me like what this you know world is and how how it works and like literally it's kind of just like everything's 2D and it's like if you took something and pushed, uh, you know those um, nails, those beds of nails that you put your hand in and then they, mm-hmm. the hand pops up on the yeah, other side? Yeah, yeah. It's like that. So they're kind of just showing that everything is all connected in this 2D sort of space and then you push an image out and that's like us. Mm-hmm. And they literally have shown me like them kind of just floating and hovering above and they think of us as their children because we're their creation and part of their consciousness is projected into us. And so they're just another perspective to be able to share information with us once we open ourselves up to understanding that. So um, in one of my ayahuasca ceremonies, so I've had chronic back pain uh, since I was 11 years old because I got in a major car accident and then have had other major um, back injuries as I got older. And my back, um, this was, I guess in August of this year, um, I was in so much pain constantly, like so much pain. I could like every like hour I would have to like lay on the ground and just be like, why is this happening? Why is my back hurting so badly? they would just like tense up. So in an ayahuasca ceremony, like literally at the end of the ayahuasca ceremony, I could feel them coming into like my space. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be out of this. What are you guys doing? Why are you still here? And then they like push me into my childhood home where I was when I was five years old. And this is like, I know this is gonna be like TMI, whatever, but we're gonna talk about poop for a second. So, <laughs> so, um, so it literally showed me and it was like, you, it was, like my living room when I was five years old and there they were like, you have to go talk to her. She's under the piano. And I'm like, what do you mean she's under the piano? And I look under there my five-year-old self is under the piano, like literally holding in going to the bathroom because I had all this shame about going to the bathroom, right? Like as a kid, for some reason, my parents, like it wasn't like, 
it was like this big mystery, like you didn't talk about it, right? So I had to go and is like crawl under the piano and go talk to her, like you have to help her. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. So I like crawl under the piano and talk to my five-year-old self. And I'm like, hey, Tanya, girl. I'm like, listen, it's not really good to do this. Like, don't, don't like hold in this stuff. Like there's no shame. It's okay, blah, blah, blah. So I literally like, grab her hand and like pull her out from underneath the piano and like take her towards the bathroom. And as soon as I do that, I'm like shot back into the room where uh, like in the, I, you know, the ceremony room. And I start throwing up like chunks, like giant chunks of something. And I have no idea. I've been throwing up all night and I hadn't eaten anything. Like there was nothing to come out of me. Right. So I'm throwing up these chunks and I'm like, why is this happening to me? What's going on? And then as soon as I was able to take a breath, I took like this really deep breath and like let it go. And all of a sudden my lower back just went and released, wow. completely released. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. And they were showing me that stored trauma in the body literally causes so much pain. And we think it's from like an outside source that has caused this to happen, but we actually hold on. And wow. when we have trauma that happens to our bodies and we already have stored trauma in that area, because if you think about it, your intestines, right? Or right where your lower back is, it's just on the other side. Right. So they were showing me that when you have external physical trauma, but then you also have emotional trauma in the same space, it creates this uh, this intense, intense pain and it just will stay there and get worse and worse and worse until you fix it. So you can actually go in to past memories into your child self and find the trauma and speak to your child self and parent so yourself. Were you holding on to the shame of the poop? From the five year old? I, I guess so. I mean, listen, okay, first of all, being a woman, <laughs> being a woman, right? We're not supposed to like burp or right. fart or right, do right. anything, right? You know, it's not, Tanya, it's just... sex aside, I connect to that completely. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny, you know, uh, uh, I, if when my mother tells me I smell, it makes me like, like I can remember her, like, like you know, using the bathroom or whatever and be like, oh, and yeah. I, I, I that really bothers me. I literally, I was getting a tattoo from one of my best friends, and I had to go to the bathroom so bad, uh, it, like while I was sitting there. But I didn't want it. I didn't want to use his bathroom because I feel, sh you know, I, I felt shame about that. Like to be, to me, it was just like being um, a negative, ha having a negative impact on other people, and I would hold it to get. You know how many times I've like held it until I got home. Because right. I didn't want to like, well, you know. It, I think a lot it, of people it, can relate to that. <laughs> and, but I mean, apparently, like, yeah. to, to my to my terrible detriment, like really, like really putting myself through like a lot of trauma, and like like in I got a forty five minute drive at, to to be panicking the whole time, you know. And then the majority of the time, I've always made it home. But it's like it's like oh my god, you know. Well, Jesse, you saying you have back pain? Maybe you got poop shame. As you're exactly saying, what I was it, thinking. as you're saying, That's I'm saying. like. <laughs> Do I have poop shame? What is um, going that's on? Exactly. Do I have poop I, shame? I have to resolve Don't my poop shame. Your younger hey, self. you know Just Hey, try wait it. a second. Just try hey, it. wait a second. My back is starting to feel better all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, here's here's my other question about that. Have that I just gotten amazing over my poop story? Shame? Everybody in the comments, tell me that it's okay to have smelly poop. Shame. <laughs> so so make, Tanya, make me feel better. See, did you okay. did you no reason to be ashamed? Was that a real situation? Did you remember hiding under the piano? Yes. And and did you remember something coming to you and and holding your hand and taking? No, but that would be so bizarre. That, that would be something. really cool, right? Oh my that god, that was so me. Cool. That would <laughs> that be so me. cool. Oh my god, I visited on my time, time traveled. traveled. <laughs> I mean, but time that's the thing. Time since time is not linear, right? right? Like no, we literally course. can go back and change our past if we choose to. I it's just going in there with the right intentions and knowing the tools of doing it, which is using like the emotional connection to the trauma to be able to release it in our bodies. Like we're well, so and powerful. And all you need to know is what you did. I know what I did. I know that I had a conversation with myself. I know that that is the, the new thing. And mm -hmm. I know that by reopening that box and going through that moment with somebody coming to me and saying, it's okay. That's all I yeah. needed at the time. Look, now I gave yeah. it to right. myself. You know, wow. essentially, you're just feeding the illusion machine. But the illusion machine is what's killing us all. You know, we we create these illusions that hurt us, 
and then it's we it's for us to go back into those illusions and 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 give ourselves the medicine that we didn't get at the time well it's because we're told false truths all the time like we're constantly told who we have to be how we have to be right like by our right. teachers by our society by our parents it's constant programming right but it's false programming and so our authentic selves want to be expressed a very specific way because we've been designed as a unique puzzle piece to be able to express very uniquely so when we're not expressing our authentic self and we are seeing this outside perspective saying no you need to be like this and it doesn't agree with what you're feeling you start to distrust yourself right. and that distrust causes shame guilt fear trauma it causes so much trauma in the body so that's why finding yourself and coming back home to yourself is literally the best part of healing because you can heal everything once you realize how powerful you are and you have control of your entire being and your authentic self is expressed perfectly like as it's perfect unique self that doesn't make any sense you know what i'm talking about i get you <laughs> no and and, uh, and honestly uh i feel markedly better i i honestly uh two minutes ago i was going man how am You're i not gonna swaying get in the back car? and forth anymore and, yeah how am i gonna get in the car and drive where i'm going i'm really not feeling i'm feeling so uncomfortable and um and i i got a lot going on beyond just that but i totally feel a lot better and i do actually think we had a healing tonight i awesome. connected to the <laughs> conversation and uh and i i kind of have a feeling if i meditate on it a little bit more and understand why where my feelings are coming from i'm probably going to have even more of a positive yeah. reaction from it yeah. um, find the trauma any down. literally anyone listening i'm telling you if you can go back to a childhood trauma and go back and like in a meditative state being completely open and go in and parent yourself give yourself the information that you need at that, that point it doesn't matter if it's your 25 year old self or your four-year-old self it doesn't matter wherever the trauma occurred like we all know where pieces of trauma lie and if you don't maybe you're like really suppressing these memories, then like sit with it and like sit with it. Look where the pain is in your body. If it's your shoulder, if it's your arm, if it's like whatever it is, like sit with it until the memory arises and then go into that as a little time traveler and speak to yourself and give it the messages of healing that you needed, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Try it. Why well, not? Try it. Tanya, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, for our first. You have uh, to come back. Will you, yes, are you yes. interested in coming back? Tell me yes. Please. I would love to. Let's do it. Uh, this is great. You, <laughs> so first, amazing. let me thank all of our uh, listeners, viewers at home, everybody who's been commenting, paying attention. Let's thank the Rams Network, Rock Against MS, for hosting us here on Twitch. Um, and um, and let us announce with, with Tanya here, we've got a special announcement. We've got our calendar for uh, no, we, we already had our calendar for next month, but we got our calendar for August and yes. we've got some incredible guests coming on to the show. Michael, who is our guest for the first two oh, weeks of oh, uh, I, August? I didn't bring it up. Let me bring it up. We have, uh, we have actually the first three months of August all set. Oh, where is it? I have Samantha Leah is a Samantha Leah. amazing, amazing musician artist but also very based in spirituality hold on i'm opening up the calendar because i didn't make the a graphic for it yet uh july august samantha leah and then uh the next week we have uh, alicia Mun munyan who is also a very spiritual uh reiki master uh hypnotist um just another local friend from my circle um and She's going to share her spirituality with me. And you just amazing gave me and our third week. The week after that, I finally convinced her she was resistant. She's being all shy. But um, <laughs> when I finally told her, I was talking about what one of our other guests were talking about. She was like, well, that's easy. I could come on and do that. I said, I know. I said, I know you can come on and do that. I said, we're, we're just we're trying to collect, you know, people's experiences, you know, so that the other people out there in uh, the world don't have to feel so alone. And, uh, you know, it was always a hard thing for me, experiencing things different ways than other people were experiencing them and feeling like, oh, man, I'm like so alone. I'm like, I'm the only one experiencing it like this. But uh, I'm really excited to have my mom, Suzette Snyder, yes! uh, as an artist <laughs> and oh um, a, uh, a beautician and so many different things and also a uh, psychonaut uh, and a big advocate for uh, ayahuasca. Anyway, um, you need four you. hours for Suzette. We do. We'll have her on again, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, thank you for joining us on another live stream of consciousness. We'll see you next week.
hey, wait a second. Fine. You got to give wait, me more no. than that. Oh. I don't give you more than we did. Huh? <laughs> we're we're, we're an hour and 15 but... minutes over. The, we're we're <laughs> very right. over. But I gotta okay. run the the, the, the um, You know what? I'm sorry. When we start to get to 116, I hate the number 16. See, now uh, we gotta go a minute over because I don't like right. ending it on the 16th. So now you've taken way too long because Let's I hate this number six. I listen, Tanya. I was Wait. in a relationship for for almost 20 years with 16 being my favorite number, only to find out that 16 is the master arcana for the tower card. And uh, in my Arcana deck, it's it's called Caught in the Ruins. And it so applied to my life of being unable to move from my thing that 16 has now become a scarring number for me where I'm literally like, I need it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 16's kind of ended on a 16. Jesse, go do trauma work on 16. I do. I got to do some trauma work on 16. I keep, I keep trying. My, 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 my angels keep messing with me and giving me lots of 16s, and they're making me laugh about it. But when it comes to the show, I'm just like, I don't like it to end there. All right. Well, we're, we're past the 16. I'm sorry. Michael, what do you want to add? I just want to say, Tanya, hang out for a second so we can talk okay. to you after we leave. Uh, Jesse, I love you. This, I love you, too. I am so happy that I... I manifested this being the best episode yet because i said this is going to be an interesting one and that was just man that story was out of this world literally yes, thank you so much sweetie for coming on the show and thank you for having me my i tell my brother i love him so much right. good night, night. Oh, 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 oh.